Today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple dust collector for your shop vac. So I decided to use the easiest to find pail out there, the Home Depot bucket. And my vacuum source was going to be my little shop vac. I experimented with a whole bunch of different baffle shapes inside of the bucket. I tried all kinds of different shapes. But with many of the shapes, it just didn't separate the sawdust. It kept on going right into the vacuum. Doesn't matter what I tried, nothing seemed to work. I found that using just one bucket wasn't very good. As soon as the bucket got about one third full, it would suck it right up into the vacuum. So I decided to go twice as high using another bucket. And I found a real easy way to attach the two buckets together with no additional parts. So to start, you'll need two buckets, three inch and a half straight couplers, one 90 degree inch and a half fitting, one 45 degree fitting, three short lengths of inch and a half pipe, and they need to be an inch and three eighths long, two two inch flexible pipe caps, and one small sheet metal screw. And as always, any of the parts or tools I use in the video will be linked in the description below. So take the first bucket and remove the handle. Now you want to cut off this piece, this piece, and this piece, just underneath that first ring. It'll cut quite nicely with a jigsaw, or you can use an oscillating saw with a do-it-yourself blade in it like this. If you haven't seen the video yet where I show you how to do this, it's right here. Now get your utility knife and make sure you have a nice fresh sharp blade in it. Then go around the inside of the bucket and remove the burr. For the outside edge, take the utility knife and hold it 90 degrees to the surface of the bucket. As a guide, you can let the utility knife rub up against the ring. The first time around the bucket may be a little rough just because of the burr. But go around the bucket at least four to five times. It gets easier as you go. When you're done, gently clean up any of the burrs left over. When you're finished, it should look something like this. Now that we've created this nice angled surface, it'll fit right into that rounded surface on the top of the other bucket. Just put it on top and give it a good push downwards. And because both buckets are tapered, we've pretty well created a perfect seal without using anything else. If it won't go together, go around with the knife a few more times. Now take the bucket that you just cut and flip it over. You'll notice on the bottom of these buckets that the bottom is wavy, with high spots and low spots. Pick one of the low spots. Now take one of the short inch and a half pieces of pipe, a half an inch from the side, and mark it. And if you want to make a scriber, just cut a piece of coat hanger, put it in your drill, hold it against the grinder with the drill going, and that's it. Now mark the center of the bucket the same. Now take a drill and make a starter hole. These stepper drills are great for cutting plastic. I'll have it linked in the description. Now take tin snips and cut them out. When you're finished, you want the pipe to have a resistance fit. Use the tip of the tin snips and take little nibbles. It seems to work really well that way. We're not going to use any glue. A resistance fit works perfectly. So take two of the straight couplers and two of the short pieces of pipe and push them in as far as they'll go. Then push them into the holes that we cut. Now from the inside of the bucket, take the last straight coupling and bang it on. Now take your 90 degree fitting and your 45 degree fitting and just hold them up to each other like this. And you'll notice that on the side, there's these little marks right from the factory. What you want to do is move the marks a quarter of an inch away from each other and that's where you'll push it together. Moving it that small quarter of an inch helps to direct the sawdust downwards into the bucket. Now take the end with the 90 degree fitting on it and push it onto the pipe. Then rotate it so the 45 degree fitting is up against the side of the bucket. And with them angled like this, the sawdust is able to come in and swirl around the bucket and go right into the bottom. If you put a light in the bucket, you can now see where the end of the 45 degree fitting is. Now take your one little screw and put it through the side of the bucket right into the end of it. And you know something? Don't use the light, use a tape measure. And now to get your vacuum hose to fit, get your rubber end caps, put your hose end against it and mark it, make a hole in the center, then take a Dremel type tool and cut it out until you get to a nice resistance fit. And because they're rubber, they make a nice tight seal. Now just use the gear clamp to tighten them both down. So here's my little shop vac. We've got the vacuum hose going into the center of our dust extractor, sucking from the middle. 
and I've got my central vac hose which I use for everything in the workshop. And here's what the filter looks like before. So we're going to suck up this pile of sawdust. It's the equivalent of a five gallon pail. And even when the lower bucket is completely full of sawdust, it won't pull itself apart because of that nice friction fit. And now it's easy to pick the bucket up and dispose of the sawdust. Now let's have a look in the shop vac. There's only a bit of dust on the filter and there's practically nothing in the container. No baffles needed, just a simple practical design that works great. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, and hit the dinger to get notifications, and we'll see you next time.